Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. This is your host, Debbie. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. I'm your host, Debbie, and today we have a very special guest. As you can see, we're not in our usual studio. We're in Balcones here in downtown Waco, and introduce yourself. Hi, I am Mike Foley, and I am the author of three cocktail books and one cookbook. Yay, well, we're so glad to have you on the podcast today. And we're so glad to be here in Balcones, just soaking up the beautiful atmosphere and of course being surrounded by your lovely works. Um, we are here today to talk about um, one of your newest cookbooks, as well as talk about some of your other um, cocktail books. Tell me about that. Absolutely. So I started out in 2015 with Drinking with the Saints, The Sinner's Guide to a Holy Happy Hour. And in the book, I give you beer, wine, and cocktail suggestions for the various feast days of the church year. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. And so you built on top of that to making three other books. What has that been like? Well, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it, <laughs> a lot about, of drinks, right? Well, talking about a great research project. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So we came out with Drinking with the Saints. It was a big success. Two years later, we came out with a special Christmas book, Drinking with Saint Nick. I love. Two years after that, uh, drinking with your patron saints. And then after that, most recently last year, a cookbook, mm -hmm. Dining with the Saints. I, I, I figured after all those cocktail books, I should probably have something to eat. Yeah. So, yeah. So next dessert. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, Deserting with the Saints, we, that doesn't sound mm, quite right. Maybe not as good. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop the title. Yeah, exactly. We'll go through it. <laughs> Uh, well, one of the first questions I love to ask our guests on the show is what brought you to Waco or are you a Waco native? What's your Waco story? My Waco story is that I was offered a job by Baylor University Yay. in 2004 and I took it and I'm so glad I did. Uh, so now this is my 20th anniversary in Waco. Congratulations. And my family and I love it. Uh, I had a wife and three kids. Uh, when I first got here, we now have six kids, so three native Texans, three non-native. It's kind of a mixed family, but uh, it's been great. I love that. And so what do you teach at Baylor? I teach in the Great Texts program. So very on brand for what you do. Sort of. <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. But uh, the Great Texts program is basically sort of the, the greatest hits of Western civilization. Mm -hmm. So we just read all, all the good stuff. I love that. And so you are an author? Are you an author first, a teacher, a professor? What would you call yourself? I love being an author and I love writing cocktail books, but I'm not going to quit my day job. <laughs> um, I, I love to teach. I love being a professor at Bit. I so love that's, that. That's what's most important to me. I love that. That's fantastic. And this is really just beautiful when you've been able to take your passion and your job and just be able to bring that together. Um, so obviously explain the concept behind the book. So you know how, well, I have a cookbook and you know there are a lot, there are cookbooks, lots of cookbooks on the market mm -hmm. that give you food ideas for the various uh, holy days of the year. But I looked around and I could not find a single Christian bartender's manual that did the same thing. So I thought, here's, here's a gap that needs to be filled. That. And uh, it, it's been very well received, uh, not just I mean, it follows the Catholic calendar, but it's been received by uh, Christians of all stripes very well. So I was very happy to hear that. It has a, a good ecumenical impact. Ooh. And what are some of the feasts that people might not know that are very important? Well, uh, 
There are a lot. Uh, <laughs> there are 365 days on What? the calendar. Not everyone in the Catholic calendar has an official feast day, but almost, almost every other day. Wow. So, Which one's your favorite? Maybe that's what I should be asking. Oh, so I do most of my work on St. Augustine. He was an oh. early church father, very influential for both Catholics and Protestants. Uh, I love St. Augustine. And so I have not one, but two cocktails. Wow. His honor in the, in the book. So how do you decide what kind of cocktail meets each kind? Uh, it, that's a great question. And obviously we don't know the drinking habits, a lot of, <laughs> of the early saints, especially because they didn't have cocktail options, yeah. right? Hard liquor. It was just wine. Was it, exactly, it was yeah. just wine and beer. Uh, hard liquor wasn't invented until the middle ages or beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, with more recent saints, We actually do happen to know what their their drinking preferences were. But in the case of the earlier saints, I would take maybe a symbol of theirs in Christian art. Like if if, if they have a symbol of a pomegranate, which is a symbol of generosity, mm -hmm. that's in their uh, iconography, then I can pair it with something that involves grenadine. I love that. Which is made with yeah. Them. I was giving a talk once and a lady asked me, why did you pair this particular drink with this particular saint? And she said, and I gave the explanation and she replied, well, that's a bit of a stretch. And I said, madam, may I assure you, the entire book is a stretch. I'm pairing booze and saints. What did you think was going to happen? I love that. Um, and with that, I know you said there was really a gap for you to fill, but why do you think it's so important for this to be out now? I do think the purpose of these books is not to encourage drinking. The purpose of these books is to encourage a healthy Christian culture. I love that. Uh, because the, for me, the purpose of drinking is fellowship and good conversation. That's amazing. Um, and I do think Christians and merriment, authentic, moderate merriment should go hand in hand. Oh, I love that. And that's a wonderful message behind it. So it's beautiful to get to see that. Um, and of course, we are here at Balcones, and why are you here today? What are, what are we talking about? We met by chance, and I'm here, as you know, for a book <laughs> signing, um, because today is Whiskey Day. Yes. And so Balcones wanted to do something special, and uh, Balcones and I go way back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have been collaborating for years. For my Christmas book, I actually asked the mixologist at Balcones to prepare a couple of unique signature cocktails for the book, which he graciously did. They sell signed copies of my book in the gift shop, so we've had a long and uh, wonderful history. Oh, I absolutely love that. And with that, it's a great representation of showing local authors here in our community. You're also in a few other bookshops around town. Tell me about that. That is correct. Fabled has also been a very wonderful collaborator, wonderful partner, and so has Brazos River Goods. Uh -huh. uh, they're they're lovely. They got a couple of, they have a lot of great stuff and they also have my books. I love that. And of course, it's signed copies here in Balcones. So that's wonderful to see. And then you will be here today setting up a signing. Indeed I am. And I've heard you actually did another pop-up event with Fable before when they had their author event as well. What was that that's like? Great. The local author's fair. That was a lot of fun. I was surprised by not only the number of local authors, but the diversity of books, the, the, the kinds of different things they're all interested in. That was really was really cool to see. I've never seen a book like yours, so I'm sure yeah. that that was amazing to get a show that representation that wasn't there before. Uh, really just joining in our community. Um, with that, of course, what is something that you would like to see more of in our Waco community? Gosh, that's a good question. Having been here 20 years, <laughs> I've been very happy with with most of the developments that I've seen. So as as an Irish Catholic who writes cocktail books, I was happy to see Barnett's get established. Um, I'm happy to see places like Twin Liquors, which weren't here when I was here. And now we have uh, Firewater, which mm -hmm. is our fancy liquor store. That's been a good development. And I'm very happy that we finally got a good Indian. Yes, Saffron, Saffron yes. Uh, I need to go over there. I still haven't been yet. Uh, So honestly, most of my basic needs are covered. They're already met. Yeah. A lot of people just say I-35 construction finished or oh, other things. Yeah. <laughs> or just rerouted away from the city. And yeah. Oof. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. And maybe let's 
Keep the property taxes down. Well, there's a little bit. to see that too. <laughs> Less increase each year. I love that. Um, and of course, we are here this weekend before Easter. So my first question to you was, what is the drink for Easter? So tell me all about it. That is difficult because, first of all, I give like a dozen wine recommendations depending on well, the Easter dinner, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing yeah, turkey at my house, if that helps. Oh. Gosh, that throws me for I know. We're, we're unusual. It's okay. We almost did tamales, so it was either tamales that or That throwing me for a <laughs> as well. I, I mean, I have stuff for ha ham okay. and lamb and, okay. and, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Okay, we can go back to classic ham if that makes you feel better. That does make me feel Okay. Better. Um, so then you would have like a Pinot Noir or something okay. like that. Um, but for cocktails, there's a wonderful drink for after the meal called an Easter Bunny. It's a sweet chocolate concoction. It has creme de cacao, uh, cherry brandy, and chocolate syrup and vodka. You are talking my language. Um, I was saying you should get like a little hollowed out, you know, like the little hollowed out bunnies. Yeah. And then chop off the top of the ears and then pour the drink in the bun and sip it out of the little chocolate bunny. So now you can drink it. Before? Yeah, I saw it on Pinterest. Okay. okay. It's all the rage. So now you got to just try it. I was aware of that when I wrote the book, but next edition. Next edition. Oh, be yeah. Good. That would be amazing. Um, and then with that, I know you said there's so many other festivals. What should we look, be looking forward to in April? Oh, so 40 days after Easter is the Feast of the Ascension. Okay. And so what is that? I definitely recommend champagne. Okay. The bubbles imitate the direction that our Lord went when he ascended into heaven. Oh my gosh. So it's a good way to salute to our ascended Lord. And then... Um, Ten days after that is the Feast of Pentecost, when mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit comes down, and the apostles are accused of being drunk okay. because they are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite passages. So the bubbles go down for that one. Exactly. <laughs> I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to think about something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's absolutely amazing. We're so glad that you're here today to promote your book. And of course, again, just promoting our local community and giving back. Um, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. All right. And now for a word from our sponsors. Hey y'all, I'm April. Hi, I'm Caroline. And we have a new podcast for you. What's it called, Caroline? Uh, Bloody Happy Hour. It's gonna be your new favorite guilty pleasure. We're gonna talk about some bloody stuff. Serial killers, true crime, rapists, <laughs> rapists. Why not join us? We'll have a good time. You literally never know. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Bloody happy hour. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By, By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. And now, back to the episode. All right, and we're back. So we're just talking about the upcoming festivals and events happening in April. Um, and of course, again, we were here on Whiskey Day and it's the weekend before Easter. Um, so we found out what we should be looking forward to the most for that. Um, of course, with that, now we come back. And one of the things I always love to ask people when we get back is what is one of your goals or what are you hoping to achieve with these books and your cookbook? Oh, well, we kind of already talked about this. I really want to encourage a merry Christian culture. With the cookbook, I really want to encourage um, merry family culture. Um, one of the things I discovered in the course of researching for the cookbook was the, the sociological, psychological importance of the family meal. Mm -hmm. uh, that kids who don't have dinner every night with their parents or the rest of their family have all kinds of uh, 
well, the, the developmental issues. Yeah. Um, so to encourage the family dinner was one of the I love that one, one of the goals of the cooking. Good. And is there a lot of cooking easy recipes? Should I be looking yes. forward to? Good. Yes. And I'm happy to report that I actually did not do the recipes for the oh. book, which is a good thing. You don't want an Irishman in the kitchen. <laughs> Just be potatoes. Behind the bar, yes. Yeah, we can do potatoes, okay. but that's about it. So I co-wrote this. I did the saint stories and research, but the recipes were written by Father Leo Padalingo. Wow. Uh, like is a Filipino-American celebrity chef priest wow. who beat Bobby Flay in a cook-off contest. Oh my yeah. gosh. And I've had his cooking and can vouch for the fact that he's, he's fantastic. He was basically doing fusion cooking before it had a name, right? Understand. Filipino, grew up in Baltimore, so he's like mixing Asian spices with Old Bay seasoning. I mean, he's, he's just amazing. So awesome. his recipes are great. And some of them are, are longer. And, and more detailed, but others are very quick. So he gives you a good range for like the big feast and the simple. I love that. Yeah. And with that, of course, like what is your favorite recipe? Which one's the one that you put on your table? Well, I don't know if it's my favorite. It's like picking between your children. Is yeah. that the problem? <laughs> so, um, he has in the recipe, one of the longer recipes that takes to prepare, but it's worth it, mm. is um, it's potatoes au grat. So of course it goes back to potatoes. Exactly. So you think, well, the, of course the Irish one's going to love it, but it's so rich. And I made it for my my kids one mm -hmm. day. And, and one of my children said, Dad, I didn't know a potato could taste this good. <laughs> I love that. And it's like filled with all these mm -hmm. French cheeses, like three different kinds of French cheese. It's it's fantastic. It's fromage. Yeah. That's the only thing I know in French. Yeah, well, that's all you need. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was fantastic. Wow, that's wonderful. And of course, I um, want to know where can we get this book? How can we find you? Find more information about you? Well, locally, of course, Balcones, Fabled, and Rouse's River Goods mm -hmm. has signed copies of my books. They're easy to find on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a website, DrinkingWithTheSaints.com, a Facebook page, Drinking with the Saints, and my wife. Alexandra and I do a Drinking with Saints podcast. Shout out. Which you can find on Spotify or Apple. Well, I'm absolutely so excited to go and check it out and find out more about these amazing books and your new cookbook. And of course, um, of course, we want to know um, where's your, um, what, what am I talking about? I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I guess we can say shout outs next. Um, and of course, we want you to be able to shout out anybody that's helped you along this journey. Of course, your beautiful family. I always say you can shout out your mom, your dog, or your grandma, or absolutely. everybody in between. Well, I would absolutely like to give a shout out to my wonderful family, to my wonderful wife, Alexandra, who helped me with a lot of the, the research. She was a very eager collaborator. And my wonderful children, Catherine, Mary, James, Peter, Monica, and John. Oh, named after some of the saints. Andy. Wow, I love that. Um, well, that's fantastic. And it sounds like it's been a beautiful journey and being able to get this. And of course, again, being here in Balcones, that's absolutely amazing. Um, and such a wonderful opportunity to get to share this with our community, especially overall to support your mission. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners today? Just a note of gratitude to, to the Baylor community for having hired me and <laughs> being so wonderful and supportive and to wake up. Um, we've always felt at home here and, uh, I think it's it's the best place that both my wife and I have ever been. Amazing. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the show. We are looking forward to it and hope you have very much success and more merriment in your life. Thank you. And to you as well. Look close. Find us everywhere on all social media platforms, K-N-O-W underscore Waco. Check us out at RogueMediaNetwork.com and we're on YouTube under Rogue Media Network. Check out NoWaco.com. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.